I'm really sorry if my computer crashed on me. That hasn't happened in a while. If longtime viewers might know that I have been having computer issues and it just sometimes it just decides to just crash on me. But it's always really strange because the my computer will still run for a while, but basically all programs start to hang like that. So I can never actually tell if something is just running slow or if the computer is actually crashing. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm back now, so we'll try to finish up. Once everything starts up again. Okay, so where was I? I guess I gotta wait for Visual Studio to start up. Okay, so let's see. Multi layer cliff faces. Do that. Next up. We're going to go back into loading and get ready to actually grab um, data from the mods that are passed into us and we'll actually generate the mesh at a good place instead of just kind of hooking into something else. Um, and then one big thing I want about this game is that I want players to be able to modify the board basically at any time using um, different monster abilities so they'll be able to move terrain around or change the type of terrain of a specific block. So basically we'll need to be able to change this mesh mid-battle. And then after that we'll get into messing with some more graphics again, trying to assign um, every terrain type a specific color and then we'll blend them together. Okay, so let's see exactly how much any of my data was lost. Oh no, so it looks like the collision mesh generator file was corrupted. Um, hopefully. Well, obviously you can get back the information um, from my last commit from previous stream. Okay, thank you, Radio. Don't need that right now. But I'm trying to find the folder. That won't. Anything I did earlier today would be lost. Maybe this temporary file has all my um, stuff in it. Looks like the computer conveniently decided to crash in the middle of saving. Okay, but yeah, all this work that I just did is still there. Okay. Crisis averted. Alright, so yeah, we are gonna get the bottom vertices, and so. At the end of every loop, we'll just set um, bottom A to top A, and bottom B to top B, and then we'll loop through again. Oh, it's going to complain to me because these aren't initialized. Oh, that's fine. We're going to do that right now. All right. So basically, if E is, if we're at the top. Um, so, if E, I'll just do greater than or equal to be safe, equal to E diff minus 1, then top A, well, we need to figure this out, another loop like this. Well, uh, okay, we'll just do this for now. So again, if the neighbor is higher than us... Okay, so I did actually lose a little bit more. Yeah, so if the neighbor is higher than us, then it's our corner is the bottom. So I need to switch this out. Uh, 
And then if we're higher than the neighbor, which is down here, then the neighbor's corner is the bottom. So it's opposite here, the top, if, our, if the neighbor is higher than us, then the top is the neighbor's corners. And let's see. Now let's bring back up my diagram. So again, if we're looking from here, uh, the top would be here, and so clockwise would be 5, 4, so yeah, I go 5, 4, 2, 1. Is that how I really want to do it, though? Let's see, if I did that, then I could just go A, B, A, and then A, A, B. Uh, but that wouldn't work, actually, because A, the A ones need to, um, uh, what's it called, line up. So if we're looking okay here, yeah, so the top will actually be backwards. Are different than how the bottom vertices were done. I just need to remember that. And okay, this needs to switch. Okay, um, yeah, so let's find, let's, um, I guess we also need to know this triangle owner, and that will depend on what elevation we're at, so that would just be another int here. And again, it depends on if the neighbor or us is higher. Probably a better way to do this, but for now we'll just go with this. Oops. Copied a little bit more than I needed there. So now I think we're can get rid of all this code and just so it won't complain to me. I'm just going to initialize all these variables. Okay, so now we have a triangle. And the main thing is we want. a line to go from 1 to 4. And so here clockwise goes 2 to 1 and so that's A, B, A, B. So if we start top then we go A, A, B. Okay, yeah that works out. So top A, bottom A, and bottom B. And then we go top A. Oh wait, let's look again. Okay, so top A, bottom A, bottom B, and then top A, bottom B, top B. That. Oh, I've the typo there. Okay, so I um, already set up the map so that we have a too high column, but let's. There we go, that's fine, we can actually get rid of this. I'm going to comment this out so that we can test just a one high column and hopefully. Everything will work like it did this before. Alright, so... 
Block 37. That's good so far. This corner. This corner. This corner. Okay, so thankfully everything still looks to be fine. Let's actually look at the collision mesh and see if we have the triangles arranged the way that I want. That looks good. Um, I guess we should test the other um, configuration as well. So yeah, I can see in here that the triangles are arranged right. So we've got 36, 32, 33, 38, 42, and 41. Okay, so everything's looking good there. Okay, so now we just need to take care of this. Um, arrangement, which would be, not arrangement, but that condition if there is a two elevation or more difference. So here we need to create two new vertices to be the top, basically. Um, so how would I do that? I guess we already have a center. Let's, let's not try to be too fancy here. have to recalculate this, I'll need to basically copy this whole block because I'll need to find the column and row and everything again. So maybe I should just pass the center. Although, no, because the vertices might... Oh, well, no, I guess they're still always touching. Um, uh, so we can do it with our center. And then we just use my vert A and B Although I wonder if, depending on if we're on the top or bottom, if we need to flip A and B around, probably. But anyway, um, so yeah, we'll just pass the center, I guess. Oops. Okay, so first... Yeah, I think we do need to switch this. That's kind of annoying. I wish there was a better way to do it, but... Yeah, because basically if... the neighbor is above us... Then this is A and this is B, so if we look here, but the top needs to actually go in clock counterclockwise order. So if we actually go five wait, Aria one, two if we're on this side. So yeah, we have to go we have to put B first. I 
I guess we can go ahead and create the vertices regardless, so, um, let's see. Center dot, no, Y. And it's just the height step times the elevation. Oh, well, now we need to know the starting elevation, which depends on which was lower. is um, blue cell elevation and then here it's the neighbors and there's got to be a better way to do this so I kind of went silent there because I was trying to think I guess would it matter? Really, we could just always assume that one of the hexagons is higher, and then here we would just say, okay, which one's higher? Flip the indexes. So that the higher one is always first. That would make this way simpler. Okay, so let's see. So basically, we'll still want Make Cliff, but then I'll want to rename this one to, I don't know, uh, from highest. Okay, so basically, uh, yeah, we'll test this first, and then we'll need to see this. Indenting things for me. Thank you, though. Visual Studio. Okay, so if the elevation is different. Then we just need to see which one's higher. Okay, I don't even need the storage yet. So the neighbor is higher than me, then we would call. I guess we'll put the highest first, so it would be neighbor index, then my index, and then we flip these around. Do I need to like rearrange the A and B? I think so. And then center, we need to transform to go to the neighbor. Okay, so I'll take care of that in a second. In fact, I'll just pass vector 3 0 for now. And then I guess uh, normally, make cliff from highest would just. Pass this along unchanged. Okay, so now that we take care of that, a lot of this becomes way simpler. We always know the bottom is the neighbor. Okay, so we don't even need the lower storage. In fact, I should just change this to the higher index, lower index, okay, and then I'll just put H there for higher and L for lower. So 
that these variable names don't get super long. And then this is a higher hexagon center. Uh, two on line 92. Oh no, <laughs> thank you for telling me that. Yeah, this should be my vert A. Yeah, because these need to be flipped, so B first. Thanks a lot, Jay. Okay, so now that we have this all taken care of... This becomes a lot simpler. Bottom A is just... starts off as the lower vert. Correct? So... I guess it needs to be flipped, actually, because, again camera facing outwards, the clockwise vertice is actually the greater index. It's a little hard to visualize, but... Vert A. And then I can get rid of this block. Okay, and so here we know that the triangle owner... Okay, so I need to change this a little bit too. So this should be the higher cell and the lower cell. I should probably just use the H and L when I think about it, because these variables are going to get long names, but... Okay, so yeah, this is the top, so we know that the higher block is going to be the top when we reach the highest elevation. Get rid of that. Okay, and so at this point, again, we're in the middle of the column. So we need to create two more vertices. This is where I should probably just scribble on this some more, maybe make a new one. Okay, so yeah, this will be... Camera is facing towards here. Okay, so this is... Um, so from the camera's point of view, how I handled it... Oh, it took away my other... Okay, but anyway, I had it so that from the camera's point of view, the lower vertice A is clockwise. So here this would be lower A, and then here is lower B. And then I needed to make sure that the higher ones are also on the same, are the same edge, so that we could just transfer the higher vertices to the lower ones once we um, go through the loop. Actually, I'm using the wrong names here. This isn't. This is top and bottom, not high and low. Can actually keep on going down. Okay, and I want the vertice or the edge to go like that, I think. Oh, I better open up my other diagram. Okay, so this is, um, let's call it multi block column. Oh yeah, so I wanted to go from 1 to 4, so this is B to top A. Yeah, so I had it right. I want the triangle edge to go up like that. Okay, so... The triangles need to wind from top A. Oh, 
again, I wrote L here after I just deleted it. Okay, so top A, bottom A, bottom B, and then top A, bottom B, top B. If I want the triangles to wind. Okay. So if I make one vertice above the lower vertice Okay, so I flip these around which is kind of confusing. So yeah, top A I just need to create a new one above the lower vert B. I know, aren't they beautiful, Jay? <laughs> Sometimes paint's all you need, though. Um, okay, I don't need to get a corner, I need to create a new vertice. Um, how do I want to do this? I need to, like... Or is it that I figure the corners? I get the column in the row. So this is a variable I need, or the function I need to call here. So top A. And I guess Top goes again is on the same vertical edge as bottom A, and that is the lower vertice B. But we're making the cliff from the highest, so I think that's the same as the highest vertice A, so we'll use that. And again, these variables are from 1 to 6, and uh, oops, I wanted to open my other one. It depicts these corners, so it's when you look down on top of a hexagon and look around clockwise. Okay, and then the center, okay, I do have that highest center right there. Okay, so that's not too confusing. So again, I need to change this depending on the elevation. Um, what would be the best way to do that? So basically the elevation is um, Lower height plus e. This, yeah, e diff. I don't need to do mass f abs anymore. Um, maybe I can make this simpler for myself. So I think e. I think will be the elevation of the top um, top corners. So we want to start at. Uh, lower cell elevation plus one, and as long as E is greater than or equal to a higher cell elevation. And then I can do change that. I don't need this elevation difference variable anymore. Okay, so I'd like to be able to just pass an elevation here just for prettiness, but... Um, what do I want to call this? Um, let's say A position 2D. Again, we won't care about the Z right now. Um, 
I'm used to doing X and Y as Y being the depth, but I actually need to have Y be the height in this case. That's just because that's how Unity likes to do it. And the height is the... so E is the elevation, so it's E times the blueprint height step. Okay, so that's not too bad. And now we need to do the same thing for the B position. I messed this up actually. Okay, so B position to B to D, I mean, and there. Okay, so now I need to figure out the triangle owner, and the triangle owner. What is that actually? Okay, so I guess it would be the lower. Oh no, I can't do that. A little confusing because it's a higher index, and then it's something like you need to subtract layers on on it based on how high E is. Triangle owner equals higher index minus. I kind of need to know the So E is always greater than the lower cell elevation, so it's got to be E minus lower cell elevation. Uh, times the layer size, which is the blueprint count, or the cell count. Don't need this parenthesis after all. Okay, so is this correct? So on the first, so if we have a two block high column, then E would be, okay, let's say the first one is on layer one and then layer three is the final. So E starts out as layer two. Um, and then, so that means E minus the lower elevation is one. So one minus the layer size. Okay, so that's right. And then on the top, this would be 2, but then we um, just use the higher index right here. But is that um, backwards? Because... No, it's right. Actually, wait, it is wrong because... Uh, this number needs to start larger, so it's actually the higher cell elevation minus E. Yeah. Okay, so again, on the one layer below the highest, this would be one, so that's correct. And then if we're two layers below the highest, and this is two. Okay, so yeah, I think that's how it's supposed to work. So much math today. So I think I'm done here. Oh, I need to figure out the correct center. Otherwise we'll get nonsensical. So I think I'll pull this out and maybe just um, say give me a center position for any, um, any odd position. Get um, cell center. Um, I guess this will do it by index. I think I can figure this all out. I won't care about the height here. Okay, we'll just return. And zero. Okay, yeah, we don't care about the elevation. Right, 
right, because we never care about it. In fact, I can just make this a vector 2, I think. Well, this will complain now. I think it's better to make to just play around with vector 2s for now since we're changing the elevations anyway. And that's fine. In fact, I really don't even need to pass this. I mean, I guess it would save a little bit of calculations, but... Okay, so we'll just want to call get cell center for my index here, and then get cell center for the neighbor index. And then I should probably clean this up. So vector 2 center 2d equals get cell center index, and then The actual center, which we do need because we pass it around a bit. And then, uh, so, elevation times the blueprint height step. Oh gosh, I'm running late, but I really want to finish this. <laughs> All right, and there's no Z on 2Ds. I not like about that. Oh, I'm still calling 2World. This should just be a new Vector 3. Okay, so do we need this at all? I don't think so. Don't need num rows or the... I do need the row and the column, so I'll leave that. Okay, so yeah, unfortunately I'm running low on time, but we'll go ahead and test this once. Maybe it'll work magically the first time. Uh, no, definitely not. Wow, it's like all crazy. Huh. So what's going on here? I don't. I'm surprised that the code I just did somehow messed up the whole rest of the corners. Maybe, uh... So do I use... Yeah, I use the center here, but... That had the Z, or the correct Y, didn't it? That was a 2D. Hmm, okay, uh, let's. Does the same thing happen if I just make everything on one layer? so that there's no elevation differences. I don't really know why all the vertices are getting scrunched up at the last column, or last row. That is kind of weird. Um, I hate to leave everybody on this cliffhanger, but yeah, I'm running out of time now. Hmm. Okay, so obviously... Some, when I change this code up here, it confused the rest of the game somehow. I guess I'll come back to that. It must have been when I changed the center, but I think it's equivalent to what I had before. Oh, I know why. It's because this two world is is a vector 3, um, and again it's the y coordinate being weird, um, or not weird, but the y coordinate being the elevation. So I want 
want to return a new vector 2 using the world X and world Z. Okay, so hopefully this will work. Okay, good. Now everything is back to how it used to be. Alright, so with my last few seconds, I wanted to see what happens when I have a column. Alright, so yeah, it's not working the best. Still got the top, but none of the other triangles really make any sense. Something there. I don't know why it stopped in the middle though, that's weird. But anyway, yeah, I guess um, we'll have to come back to this tomorrow and figure out what's going on. But yeah, thanks everybody for coming by and watching. I do appreciate it. Um, I'll be back tomorrow around 8.30 Eastern. Um, and remember, Daylight Savings Time did just end for me here in North America, so everything will be an hour later. I'm not sure how it works for everyone around the world, but anyway, it'll be 8.30 Eastern American time. And um, we'll continue working on this. And if you missed any of my streams and you'd like to catch up, I do have a YouTube channel, so feel free to look in my channel description for a link. Uh, I also have a Discord if you want to chat with me during the day. We'd really appreciate it. Um, we're trying to get that community going. Um, again, you can find a link in my channel description or by typing exclamation point Discord in chat. And of course, you can always follow me here on Twitch to be notified when I go live tomorrow and hopefully, well not hopefully, we will finish or figure out this bug. Yeah, that's weird. It's like trying to connect over to this last hexagon. I wonder what's going on there. Uh, but anyway, again, I hope everybody has a great night and thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Bye bye.